Imagine, 105 years ago, there was an aircraft without control surfaces to make it turn left or right, and without a rear fuselage. This is a Caudron G3. It's actually a French aircraft, but it was also delivered to the Royal Flying Corps, the predecessor of the Royal Air Force. Now, the British didn't use it in combat, but they did use it for training. However, training was very different than it is today. The very first pilots had to learn in single-seaters. There was only one position inside the aircraft. So very often they would have the control stick in one hand and the manual in another. So to have a twin-seater like this Caudron G3 was already a great improvement. So the new recruit would be in the front and the instructor in the back. However, there was no such thing as dual controls yet, so only the new recruit actually had the controls. If the trainee pilot was very nervous and would freeze up, the instructor might have to call, pull up, pull up. But actually, because of the noise of the engine and the wind rushing past, they couldn't hear each other. So, they invented the very first intercom system. This is the Gospert system. It's actually a very simple system. There are two parallel tubes, each ending with earpiece and mouthpiece. So they could talk and listen to each other at the same time. It was invented in the middle of the First World War by a chap called Smith Barry and was used for several years, even after the First World War. Later on, dual controls and an intercom system were introduced, but what didn't change was the lack of control surfaces. On modern aircraft, you have flaps and ailerons, and they will make the aircraft go left and right. That didn't exist yet with this Caudron G3. They used something else, and that was called wing warping. So if you look over there, there's a cable coming out of the cockpit, and going all the way, all the way up to the wings. Wing warping was used on the very first aircraft. So for instance, the Wright brothers in 1903 performed the very first controlled flight used wing warping. So what is wing warping? Well, it's a bit like birds. So they would use their wings and turn it inwards to turn left or right. And that is what this aircraft did. Another remarkable thing is that there is no rear fuselage. There is nothing connecting the front section and the tail section but a few wires and two wooden beams. And the bottom one is actually on the ground, going all the way to the front of the aircraft. The wooden beam ends here in the front in a form of a ski. Now the reason is, well it's not for snow, but it is to prevent the aircraft from tipping over. Because as you may have guessed, this aircraft is extremely light, weighs with crew, two of them, less than a thousand pounds. Another interesting thing, these wheels, they're actually the same as was used on motor vehicles. And also have a look right there in the middle, those bungee cords. That is the suspension. That's pretty much all they had in those days. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Or better yet, come and visit us at the Royal Air Force Museum in London.